Howdy, Brickal. It's Miss Kosh. I was asked um, to explain a little bit from the breakout room problems today. So here we go. I'm going to make an answer key and talk through it. So the first thing I see on this one is that it's an absolute value function and it's been shifted to the right three. So I know that I'm going to have, I'm going to sit on the x-axis like this and I've got a slope of, I'm trying to get a slope of positive one and I've got a slope of negative one over here. Okay, that was very meticulous of me, but there you go. So when we want to write this as a piecewise function, we've got two pieces. So we can say f of x is equal to, and we use the curly brackets to indicate that there's two pieces. And so one piece has a, um, a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of negative 1. So this just becomes negative x plus 3. And this is true from negative infinity to positive 3. So I can say where x is less than positive 3. I could also say less than or equal to. I typically pick one of them to be equal and one of them not to be equal, um, since it's equal for both lines at that point. Um, it could be, so either way, put a line here, don't put a line there, you're fine. On the other one, we have a y-intercept. If we were to extend this down, we'd have a y-intercept of negative 3. Um, I don't really want to leave that there. So this becomes, it's got a slope of positive 1, and this is true when x is now greater than 3. Um, what we could have said is that they've running, they're running the bells, even though there's no students in the building, but nobody asked me. Okay, um, sorry, <laughs> I don't mean it quite like it sounded. What we had there was that f of x was equal to um, a positive x minus 3, and then f of x was equal to a negative, equal to a negative x minus 3. Distributing through, we get a negative x and a positive 3. And so that's where this became the second one. That became the first one right there. Okay, um, moving on to the next problem. Um, our notation, it should say f of x equals. So here's what I see. I see a parabola that um, has been shifted to the right 2, and it's defined from negative infinity to 3. So what I could do to the right 2 means that I'm going to sit on the origin, and I'm and not on the origin. I've moved two units to the right of the origin. I went ahead and drew that because I know that I'm defined at 3. So when I plug in 3, I get 1. Um, and so this is the beginning of my little, well, it's because of my restricted domain right there, that's the beginning of my little parabola. Um, and so then I'd also have um, the point 1, 1, and I'd have the point, when I go over 2, I go up 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, when I go over 3, I go up to 9. I think that's 9. Um, and so basically I've got oop, a terrible looking parabola. Um, something like that, and that's the one in blue. Let's do the next piece in, say, green. So what I would do here is I see it's a line. It's got a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of negative 3, but I don't really care about that. What I want to know is I'm going to have an open circle when I plug in 3, and when I plug in 3, I have negative 3 minus 6 is equal to negative 9, so I'm going to have an open circle at the point 3, negative 9. So 3, oh, well, this is annoying because it's only going to go down. Well, lovely. Three. I didn't make this problem. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Here's that. At six, um, when we plug in, oh, how do I do that? Sorry, my bad. When I plug in six, that becomes negative. Um, wait, what am I just saying to you? Three is negative six. Oh, I changed the problem. I'm so sorry. Okay, ignore everything I just said. Um, how about I write down the correct problem? So this becomes a negative 6, so it's not so bad. I was judging my fellow teacher. That was bad of me. That's what I get for not being a nice person. Okay, so I'm at the point 3, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The, the numbers are a little deceptive. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's 6. Okay, that's an open circle, and then I cruise along until I get to the point 6, negative 9. So, I mean, well, and my slope is negative 1. So, okay, hang on. This was 3, 4, 5, 6. One, two. So we end up right here. And so we just have this lovely little line going through that. And then let's go ahead and change our color to this one. 
And we have a line, um, it's just the horizontal line at y equals 5. So I need the point 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's an open circle. We cruise along until we get to 8. And so it's just doing something like that. So the domain, well, the domain goes from... Um, domain is going to go from negative infinity to 3. It's defined at 3, and then we keep going until we get to 6. So I'm going to indicate that it just goes to 6, but it does not include 6. Then we pick it up again, and we go from 6 to 8. Um, our range, I have this little piece down here that I'm looking at, and then I have this piece that goes up to positive infinity. So I'm going to go, my range is going to go from negative 9 to negative 6, I think is what that is. Um, so my range goes from negative 9 to negative 6. Then we pick it up again, and we go, we do include 0. We go from 0 to infinity. And that's our domain and range for that problem. Let's look at the last one. Okay, so on this one, here's what I think of for the first part. Um, this is... The parent function would be in like quadrants 1 and 3, and it looks something like this. But now I've shifted the whole thing to the right two units. So this would be, uh oh, hang on, I'm going to cough. <coughs> so sorry. Um, so I have my asymptote here. And so now I'm doing something like this. Um, but I only care about it until 3. So here comes 3 right through here. Uh, it's not really a line, but I'm trying to indicate what's happening. So I want to look at, um, I'm going to plug in negative 4. When I get negative 4, I get negative 1 sixth. So I have the point negative 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1 sixth. So there's an open circle somewhere really small in here. That would be an open circle at negative 4, negative 1, that's at negative 4, negative 1 sixth. And then I have an asymptote at two. So here comes that asymptote. So it's doing something like this. Oh, you know what? Let me be more precise. Um, if it's not on a grid, you don't have to um, be as precise, but when you put it on a grid, then, then it starts to matter. Okay, so if I plug in zero, I get negative one half. So zero, negative one half is right in here. Plug in, or ish, whatever. Plug in one, and I get negative 1, so we're here. So we're doing something like, well, pretend I can draw. Something like that. And then we're going to stop at um, 3. We're going to have an open circle. When I plug in 3, I get 1. So I'm going to have an open circle here at the point 3, 1. And so this would approach that asymptote going that way. So that has taken, I'm going to, I'm going to, that one's in black. I'm going to pick a new color for the next part. Um, so there's the first piece of that function, which is actually kind of two pieces because of the asymptote. Over here, when I, I think they intended, this is three to infinity and then a, a bracket. Um, when I plug in three, I actually, it's not defined at three. So they're being a little sneaky on that one. It's not, this, this function is not defined until you get to 4. So at the point 4, this 4 minus 4 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. Plug in 5, and I get 5 minus 4 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Oop, here we go. Plug in, what do I need to get to so that I have, um, I need 8, because 8 minus 4 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2. So I'm going to have the point 8, 2. And this goes off to positive infinity and does something like that. Um, and so now when they ask, what's my domain and range? My domain goes from, neg um, from negative 4 to negative 2, or positive 2, my bad. And then it picks it up again and goes from 2 to 3. It does not include 3. And then it picks it up again and goes from 4, which it does include, to infinity. So that's the domain of that graph. The range, let's see, the range goes from negative infinity up to this point right here, which we said was this. So the range goes from negative infinity to negative one sixth. It does not include that because it's an open circle. Then we pick it up again and we go from zero to infinity. Um, oh, my bad. It does include zero. That's um, a hard bracket there. So it goes from zero to infinity. So hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you have additional questions.